The Kansas City Chiefs just added exactly what the NFL feared. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Kansas City Chiefs news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Louis Rees Zamet confirms main NFL position after joining Kansas City Chiefs. Louis Rees Zamet has set his sights on becoming a kick returner for the Kansas City Chiefs after inking an NFL deal. The former rugby international's switch to American football is picking up speed with the Welsh speedster confirming his ambitions to secure a starting spot. The 23-year-old's bold move to chase an NFL dream is paying off. Having turned heads during the International Player Pathway program, his performance at the Pro Day at the University of South Florida last month didn't go unnoticed. Rhys Zamet, known for his rapid pace as a wing for Gloucester in rugby, has now penned a deal with the Chiefs. He's aiming to join the ranks of the current Super Bowl champions 53-man roster for the 2024 season, alongside stars like Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. While it's not common for athletes to switch from rugby to NFL, there's curiosity about which position Reese Zamet will ultimately play. Initially pondering a wide receiver role on the rugby pod, he has clarified, so the plan we've got is obviously the new kickoff rules this year is absolutely massive. That's where my main position is going to be, so I've got to fight to be a starter in that position this year. And then, within the offense, it's about how quick I can learn the play, because we've got a plan to put me in various positions, play out the backfield at running back, be a slot receiver and just being able to use me as much as possible, and be creative with me. So it's all about me learning the playbook and getting the chemistry with all the players on offense to be able to use me. So it's kind of up to me to learn all the plays and being able to integrate myself into a starting role, the Welshman continued. But I know it's gonna take a bit of time for me to do that and all the coaches know that. As for the adjustment to life as a footballer, it appears that it is still going to take some time for Rhys Zamet to truly get used to his new guys. Explaining his excitement at signing as a Chiefs player, he confessed, when I left the facility and I was coming home on the plane, I was in the airport in Kansas, and as I was going through security, some guy was looking at me weird. I was looking at him, and he was like, are you a sports person? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, who do you play for? And honestly, when I said that, I played for the Chiefs, I felt so weird saying that I play for the Kansas City Chiefs. When I said it, I was thinking, that feels weird. I still hasn't sunk in yet, I think it's gonna sink in when I get to meet all the boys when I get to training on the first day. But yeah, it's been an absolute whirlwind of three months and I'm just so excited to meet everyone and start training. Highlighting the contrast between rugby and football, he further expressed, I think the main difference is, I've never done anything as hard as I've done in Turkey and Switzerland. I don't know what preseason is like for the NFL, but that is probably going to be one of the hardest things I do at a Rugby World Cup camp. The difference is that the training in NFL is more explosive. You're not doing long endurance testing and training. It's all about explosive power, speed, short, sharp kind of stuff. So it's perfect for me. The second story is a Chiefs trade with AFC rival to add Travis Kelsey's replacement well ahead of time. The Kansas City Chiefs have a difficult question to answer this offseason. How do you make a back-to-back -back Super Bowl winning team even better? Thus far, it hasn't come easy. The Chiefs have made some moderate additions along with notable subtractions. Legereus Sneed was traded to the Tennessee Titans. Chris Jones signed a long-term extension to stay with the Chiefs. Hollywood Brown could be the deep threat Patrick Mahomes has lacked since Tyreek Hill was shipped to Miami. However, the offseason is just beginning. The NFL draft is a few weeks away, and at least one NFL mock draft suggests Kansas City should do the unthinkable prepare for life after Travis Kelsey. If Brock is sitting here at 32, that's the easiest pick for me, Bryant McFadden wrote. He's a difference maker, and he'll get an opportunity to learn from Travis Kelsey. Whenever Travis Kelsey decides to call it quits and get ready for his invitation to Canton in the Hall of Fame, you have his heir apparent right there, waiting in the wings. Right there in the building. So this was super easy for me, and just imagine the offense that has Travis Kelsey, Brock Bowers, Hollywood Brown, Rashi Rice, Isia Pacheco, along with everything they have along the offensive line. Good luck trying to slow them down. Now, there's an obvious issue with McFadden's approach. 
there is a 0% chance Bowers is still on the board when Kansas City picks. Mel Kuyper Jr. has the Georgia product headed to the New York Jets at pick number 10. Bowers has also been floated as a likely target of the Los Angeles Chargers, who pick ahead of the Jets. In this scenario, the only way the Chiefs could acquire Bowers would be to trade up 22 picks. That asking price is sure to be steep, especially if Kansas City is forced to trade with the Jets, an organization already upset with them over the McColl Hardman fallout this very offseason. Hardman suggested that he called Chiefs personnel in hopes of a KC reunion in the middle of last season. While that claim has yet to be proven, it would be tampering if true. Things move quickly in the NFL, of course, so the Jets would still be willing to do business with the Chiefs for the right price. Here's my guess as to what it'll take to move up nearly two dozen selections. The Kansas City Chiefs brought back another familiar face on Monday by re-signing veteran tailback Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. A first-round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, Edwards Hilaire has recorded 1,145 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns in 48 games over the last four seasons. He also has 89 receptions for 765 yards and seven scores during that time. Edwards Hilaire appeared in a career-most 15 games last season, logging 87 total touches for 4 on 1 yards and 2 touchdowns. His top performance of the year occurred in Week 15 when he tallied 101 yards from scrimmage and a touchdown against New England. The 24-year-old tailback is now back in Kansas City as the Chiefs pursue a third straight world championship. The Kansas City Chiefs retained a valuable contributor to last year's historic defense on Wednesday with the re-signing of defensive end Mike Dana. The 26-year-old Dana recorded the third most pressures, the third most quarterback hits, and the fourth most sacks of any member of the Chiefs last season, setting career bests in all three categories. Additionally, Dana's two quarterback hits in Kansas City's victory over Baltimore in the AFC Championship game led the team. For the season, Dana's 7.45 defensive snaps ranked second behind only fellow defensive end George Karlaftis among Chiefs defensive linemen. He was also a versatile member of a Kansas City defense that racked up the second most sacks of any team in the NFL last year, logging significant snaps on both the edge and within the interior of the defensive front. A former fifth-round pick back in 2020, Dana has increased his sack total in each of his four seasons with Kansas City, culminating in last year's 6.5 sack performance. He was undoubtedly one of the key members of a Chiefs defense that yielded the second-fewest points of any team in the league last season, and now, with a new contract in hand, he'll have a chance to pick up where he left off in 2024. The third story is the Kansas City Chiefs could look to this veteran as a replacement for Rashi Rice in a worst-case scenario. The car accident involving Rashi Rice has left the Kansas City Chiefs facing a challenging situation. While the incident is still under investigation, head coach Andy Reid might be already considering alternatives in case Rice is unavailable for the 2023 season. Some analysts believe they know who the Chiefs' plan B could be. On March 30th, Rice became the main suspect in a hit-and-run incident in Dallas, Texas. The rookie was driving a Lamborghini that was involved in a crash with four other vehicles, according to local police. While no charges have been filed yet, Rice could potentially face trial. If convicted, the Chiefs receiver could be sentenced to up to 10 years in prison. Given this scenario, Reed and the team cannot afford to wait and must look to take advantage of the remaining weeks of free agency to find a replacement for Rice. This is where Tyler Boyd comes in. Tyler Boyd is entering his ninth year as a professional. Selected in the second round of the 2016 draft, the University of Pittsburgh graduate has spent his entire career with the Cincinnati Bengals, who allowed him to enter free agency this offseason. Although 2023 wasn't his best year, he caught 67 passes for 667 yards and two touchdowns. In his career, he has amassed 513 catches, 6,000 yards, and 31 touchdowns. Boyd may not be the youngest option in free agency, but he could serve as a solid alternative for Mahomes and a reliable backup for tight end Travis Kelsey. Acquiring Boyd would likely come at a premium, but it could be a worthwhile investment if the worst-case scenario for Rice materializes. If Reed and offensive coordinator Matthew Nagy decide against pursuing Boyd, their alternative would be to select a receiver in the 2024 draft. Thus far, Analysts believe they are leaning towards selecting a defensive back, 
with cornerback Ennis Rakestraw Jr. being the leading candidate. Should the Chiefs opt for a receiver, their top choices, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Rome Odunze would likely be out of reach, as they have the 32nd pick this year. Without a trade to acquire any of the top three receivers, the Chiefs would likely choose between Brian Thomas Jr., Adonai Mitchell, or Ladd McConkie, provided they are still available. Rice's case has yet to be resolved, but the Chiefs still have time to address the issue and avoid any potential obstacles to achieving an unprecedented three-peat which remains within their grasp. Kansas City Chiefs wide receiver Rashi Rice faces eight charges in connection with a multi-vehicle hit-and-run crash last month in Dallas that left several people injured, police announced Wednesday.